Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. Donald Trump didn't create the issue of undocumented workers taking jobs of Americans. He just tapped into the angst, anger, and frustration of people who believe that's true. But is it really? You bet there are a lot of illegal aliens working all around Sarasota and Manatee, but are they taking jobs that you want or don't want to do our subject tonight but first our top seven stories at seven in this day and age when the confederate flag is brought to a high school you bet there will be an increased police presence we're talking about manatee high school following an incident where a student showed up with a confederate flag during pride week the flag sparked black Lives matter protests from manatee high school students and students at palmetto high school yesterday morning leading Superintendent Diana Green to send out a robocall last night threatening to cancel homecoming festivities if disruptions continued. The school district says this evening it ultimately decided to allow homecoming events to continue as planned after the school day passed without disruption. Homecoming weeks in and of themselves are distracting. Uh, when you add all of this into it, it's extremely distracting. So what we want to do is help our students get back to the business of going to class and learning. The group of students who organized the Black Lives Matter protest is planning similar protests in the future, the first of which will be on Sunday. The shortage of bus drivers in Manatee County is beginning to have a real impact on riders. Earlier this week, dozens of passengers who scheduled rides through MCAT's handy bus system had their pickup canceled because of high demand. Some passengers say they had medical appointments and had to find alternative transportation. So they told me Friday that Monday I wouldn't be able to be picked up, uh, Wednesday I wouldn't be able to be picked up, and Thursday I wouldn't be able to pick you up. People rely on the service and it's a lifeline for a lot of people. Um, they worked to make it right by you know, calling those folks back and, and apologizing for, for the lapse. County officials say they have hired two new drivers to help alleviate the demand. Many of the canceled rides have been rescheduled. In Venice tonight, the sheriff's office is investigating what could be a possible murder-suicide. When deputies arrived at the 200 block of High Point Road this afternoon, the bodies of a man and woman were found at the scene. It was originally believed to be a double murder, but now investigators suspect a murder-suicide. You know, it's early in the investigation, but all signs point to this, uh, these two individuals being in a relationship. They both do reside at this home, so we do believe that it's domestic in nature. The medical examiner's office hasn't released the cause of death of both victims, and no names have been released. Questions remain about what to do with a solar canopy built in the wrong location in Venice. Florida Power and Light hired a contractor to build the parking canopy at the Venice Community Center. It was accidentally built in the wrong location. The city council has yet to take action and now FPL is asking to meet with council members privately, a move raising the concerns of some residents. That's the kind of thing that could lead to funny business and it makes people, taxpayers and voters nervous. When you're in an elected position, you're always in a no-win proposition. Somebody is always going to assume the worst. Somebody's going to assume that everything is okay. FPL says it only wants to hear ideas from council members and the meetings are meant to reach a resolution quickly. A gun range in Nokomis is about to be partially reopened beginning tomorrow. We got an inside look at the Knights Trail Park facility, which was closed over the summer while crews installed baffles, which are thick wooden beams meant to reduce the risk of bullets flying beyond the range. It will allow for people to have a much safer shooting experience, as well as the ability for the Trap and Ski Club, who is on the other portions of this property, to allow them to expand their activities. The 100-yard range will open tomorrow. Work on the remaining areas are expected to be finished by early November. Now to Bradenton Beach, where the mayor is looking for financial help to fix damage to the historic Bridge Street Pier. When Tropical Storm Colin rolled through in June, damage was done to the floating dock after several unanchored boats crashed into it. Now Mayor William Shearson wants to replace the dock at a cost of around $250,000, and the Tourist Development Council is being asked to split the cost with the city. 
A no swim advisory remains in effect for some Sarasota County beaches, and now we are learning why. A Department of Health advisory continues for Turtle Beach, Nokomis Beach, and the North Jetty Beach. This comes after unsafe levels of bacteria were found on the beaches. That bacteria can come from a variety of sources, including pet and human waste, and stormwater runoff, red tide has also let, left thousands of f dead fish, which officials say could be a contributing factor. Hurricane Matthew is now a Category 4 storm for the latest on its path. Let's check with in with ABC7 meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks. I'll tell you what, this is a devastating storm for someone down the road, it appears. As a result of uh, this rapid intensification now, up to 140 mile an hour winds, gusts as high as 160 miles an hour, and it's going to be uh, moving through some land at some point. It could be Jamaica, it could be Haiti, and the eastern tip of Cuba. Beyond that, it's too early to tell if Florida is going to see any impacts from this, but we'll have to wait and see. It's a well-defined eye now. You can see that quite clearly on the satellite imagery as it makes its way still to the west-southwest. We're waiting for that big break uh, to the north, and that's going to happen uh, late Saturday and into Sunday. And you can see Jamaica now under a hurricane watch, soon to be warning. Also, parts of Haiti under a tropical storm. A warning and watch at this point as it makes its way off toward the north. Now, there's still a lot of uncertainty in the timing and speed of the system. And it looks like uh, by Wednesday it could be just parallel with Key West uh, to the east. And that cone of uncertainty now does include just parts of southeast Florida. And that's on Wednesday. And it looks like we will see some rain bands at least feed over the state especially on Tuesday here, so we can expect showers and storms out ahead of it. You can see that uh, quite clearly on the satellite imagery. Uh, this well-defined system now could even get up to a little stronger within the next 12 hours as it makes its way off uh, toward the west to southwest. As far as the forecast models are concerned, you can still see a lot of activity east of, ice, uh, east of the state of Florida, but right on in through the Bahamas. But there are a couple of models that are still pretty close to Florida. So we'll have to watch that very closely over the upcoming days. As far as our weather is concerned, you can see that dry patch of air right off in the Gulf of Mexico. That's the trough that's going to drive Matthew off toward the northwest and around the periphery of the high pressure to the east of San Juan, Puerto Rico. A little alleyway right there will keep it away from the west coast of Florida, looks like right now, Alan. Tonight looks good. This evening, a uh, slight chance for an isolated shower. All right. Thank goodness. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Bob. And still to come, for all the talk on the campaign trail about illegal immigrants taking our jobs, are they? Are they on the Sun Coast? That story when we come back. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. It's all about fitness and health to start a new month and week. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View, we'll hear from a group of mountain climbers about their inspiration and journey. Plus, we get a fitness lesson to find out how they got in shape. Dr. Jenny from Age Vital is back to tell us how to fight our allergies without prescription meds. And Ruth's Chris Steakhouse joins us in the kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740.
Donald Trump didn't create the angst over undocumented workers taking Americans' jobs. He just tapped into it. The reality is there are plenty of illegal immigrants working here on our beloved Sun Coast. They are cutting your lawns. They are picking your tomatoes. In short, as Adam Cellini tells us, they are doing many of the jobs that we don't want to do. Early in the morning, hours before sunrise, a gaggle of hard hats and fluorescent shirts flock to a two-mile stretch of US 301, where vans are waiting to take them to their career for the day. It's the life of a day laborer, a career that rarely promises more than 12 hours of work at a time, an industry dominated by Hispanic immigrants who are also dominating this election cycle. We have to build a wall. We have to finally, once and for all, fix our immigration system. Immigration, arguably one of the most divisive topics between presidential candidates. Trump proposing to tackle immigration at the border, while Clinton suggests taking care of those already in the country. What's going to happen is if you're going to be a citizen, you're going to have to leave and you're going to have to come in. I would not deport children. I do not want to deport family members either. According to the National Day Labor Survey taken within the last decade, 80% of curbside day labor was from Mexico or Central America, and half were undocumented. Now you're actually losing American jobs by keeping them here. Local attorney Sarah Blackwell says it's one of the only ways an illegal immigrant can survive. There's no way to allow an illegal immigrant to work legally. So there has to be these systems that allow them to work, which is a shame because it puts them in a situation where they're taken advantage of. No documentation, no need for insurance, minimum wage, overtime, or any other amenities required by law. If you're going to allow them to stay, you need to allow them to work. Otherwise, you are literally treating them in a way that lets them be slaves. As CEO of Protect U.S. Workers, Blackwell feels this also creates a competitive disadvantage for Americans. But economics professor Michael Snipe says don't forget who ultimately pays for the cost of fair wages and treatment. That, that's certainly something that consumers could see, that if firms are experiencing an increase in cost because we are kind of no longer relying on, on day laborers, that could reflect an increase in cost that could be showing up in uh, increase in price. And if half the workforce was suddenly deported across the borders, Snipe says there would certainly be a shock, but it would be felt mostly outside of Florida. If, if that were to happen, I wouldn't expect it to have much of an effect on Florida. Uh, I would expect the effects to be much greater where there's a higher percentage of illegal immigrants. You know, California, Texas, Arizona, places that do have more illegal immigrants that do this type of day labor work. Mike Mulkatin is the general manager of Trojan Labor, one of four temp agencies on that stretch of US 301. These are the most common sources of day labor in Sarasota, in a place where no papers means no job. But their attention to detail also seems to be hurting supply. Mike estimates only 5% of his workforce is Hispanic. We, we have more work than people. Um, every day we're out recruiting people, ads in the paper, Craigslist, um, usually have more work than people. Perhaps the struggles at Trojan Labor are an example of life without an immigrant workforce, a life where Americans would rather be unemployed than perform labor. Kind of makes me upset because we'll uh, go out asking people if they want to work and they turn us down. The construction boom has been a major driver of day labor in downtown Sarasota recently, but other common day labor jobs here locally include housekeeping, landscaping, and up in East Manatee County, farm work. In Sarasota, Adam Cellini, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Adam, and when we return, we'll take up the immigration debate on our roundtable. Hurricane season is here, and Suncoast weather can go from this to this in seconds. So when severe weather threatens, count on the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're armed with the most advanced weather technology so that we can bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. Plus, we focus on the Suncoast and track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. 
If you want 24-7 access to ABC 7's breaking news stories, weather forecasts, traffic alerts, health reports, dining segments, local events, Suncoast View, and more ABC 7 specialty programming, now there's good news. Introducing the free ABC 7 channel on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. Your 24-7 access to ABC 7. Just search ABC 7 on your streaming device and download your free ABC 7 app now. It's time to upgrade your favorite news app. Now, ABC 7's My Suncoast News app is better than ever with a dynamic brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Stay connected with new features that make it easy to submit photos, share stories on Facebook and Twitter, and save stories for reading at a later time. Download our free My Suncoast News app on your mobile device at your app store. ABC 7's all new My Suncoast News app. Just another way we're here for you. Powered by the iAssociates, Associates, providing sight for life. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Hello, I'm Rebecca Vargas. And I'm Don Brennan. We use ibuprofen and naproxen to relieve pain, but could the drugs be doing our body more harm than good? Monday at Good Morning Suncoast will show you why painkillers could be causing problems for your heart. John? We're looking at showers and thunderstorms promising us a chance of rainfall, but we're keeping an eye on the tropics as well. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.employflorida.com. Joining us for more on the immigrant workers here on the Sun Coast is Sarah Blackwell, CEO and attorney for Protect U.S. Workers Now, Manuel Chapote, a volunteer on the steering committee for the nonprofit group Unidos, and Dr. Rich Swire, a citizen journalist and, and publisher. Thank you very much for, for joining us tonight because this is such a central theme in our presidential campaign. You not only hear from Donald Trump, you hear from a lot of the people going to, to the, uh, uh, those rallies. And what strikes me when I hear these conversations is that when you talk about some work, whether it's here or anywhere around the country, whether it's landscaping, construction, uh, you know, works at the car wash or construction industry, um, those are uh, jobs that, that many Americans simply will not do. Um, I'm not sure that's true, but I think that um, what I, my big concern is that and you talked about it in one of your previous segments. You know, these, we have these illegals working in farms. We have them doing, working in lawns on people, you know, condominium areas and so on. My big concern is that we're seeing a real clear and present danger. There's diseases that are being brought across the border and into Florida and into the nation that we haven't seen the biblical let you know biblical right. kinds of diseases are you, you're and saying so that affects are, that are, affects are the labor force because now you have people who are preparing food who are working in the hospitality industry who are working in hotels who are bringing diseases and i mean i mean tuberculosis I, would I mean, I mean, we're talking uh, about right, hold on. leprosy, Rich, uh, uh, yeah. Sarah, hepatitis A, B, and C. As, Sarah. as for your question on Americans that won't do the jobs, I think that the issue is Americans won't do the jobs at the slave labor cost that they are paying the illegal immigrants. So if you have a job, plumbing, farming, any of that, uh, those types of jobs, uh, lawn care, if you pay them a proper wage and treat them with respect, then you're going to have more Americans that are willing to do the job. But when you are, when an American or someone who has a work permit is competing against illegal immigrants, the illegal immigrants are too afraid usually to stand up for themselves. So they're getting mistreated, they're getting, um, you're not paying workers comp for them, you're not paying all these benefits for them, you're not paying minimum wage or you're not paying overtime. Generally, they're being mistreated. So now we have Americans who are coming in and they're not 
they're not going to take that. They're saying, no, I have rights as an American citizen. So I think you could get more Americans to do these jobs if you prove to them you would treat them with and, respect. And I, I want to get into more of the economic uh, factors uh, in our next segment. But, Manuel, when we're talking about certain sectors of the em employment force around here, when we're talking about uh, landscaping or the construction industry or the service industry, I mean, those are the industries correct me if I'm wrong, where, uh, you know, some people, I mean, they do have their papers, they have their green cards, some do not. That's correct. Um, I want to touch the point that was brought about farm labor. Farm labor was advertising nationwide yeah. to get workers, American workers, to come and replace the labor that was imported or the illegals or the immigrants undocumented, and they couldn't get anyone to apply for those jobs because that, that job is not an easy job. It's in the hot weather in California. We, we no had those. Adam Cellini go out and pick tomatoes a couple and months that, ago, and, and they he took him a couple days that. to stand it's up straight It's a very again. hard work, and these people comes here because that's the only opportunity is given. They are not highly trained, highly skilled, so they take those jobs that Americans, in general, I, I, don't I, want. I find it that <clears throat> objectionable. When you say an American won't work, I agree with what was said about if you pay them a fair labor, price for labor, if you give them the benefits they deserve and the respect they deserve, I mean, that's, that's about as racist as I can talk, you can say. You're telling an American worker who built this nation that they don't want work? Of course they want to work, but they want to work for a fair wage. They want to work in a job that they're going to get the kind of benefits and respect. And they don't mind working hard. They don't mind. I pick strawberries. When I was going through no, college. No, Rich, so I, I, I remember a, a couple of years ago, I interviewed the guy who owned a chain of car washes. Sure. He says he can't get his, his teenage kid to work there. Well, he's not paying a high enough wage. He can't, he can't, can't get people to work well, in this, and, and make what? a profit. He's not paying a high enough wage. He's not paying a high enough wage, not offering the benefits and not offering the opportunities to people. There are people that work in car washes all over this, work, this, this nation. He's just not, that particular person is not paying the right price. I think, if you don't mind um, me interjecting, but as far as racism is concerned, I deal mostly with legal immigration and offshoring of jobs, and I think it's the same in this situation when we are allowing illegal immigrants to stay in the U.S. but saying you can't work, we're putting them in a situation that's a very hard quandary right. where we are treating them like second-class citizens. And so when you're talking about Americans won't do the job, only you know certain types of people will do these jobs for this wage, I think we need to look at you know, making sure that we're treating anybody that's a human being with the rights and the respect of a human being. Obviously, we have a lot more to discuss. But first, we need, need to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're also going to have our Suncoast forecast of state with us. On your TV, on your computer, on your camera, on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Fire TV. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. on the next Black Almanac. Trump's attempts at Black and Latina outreach are probably too little too late. He's doing so badly among African Americans that in more than one poll, the percentage of Black support for Trump is smaller than the margin of error. Latino voters are being told he thinks unauthorized immigrants have to go and can't ever be fully American. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC7. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a 
Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second Spin Mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Our roundtable continues in just a moment, but first, here's a look at your weather forecast with ABC7 Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrington. Bob. I'll tell you what, we have had some drier air move in. That's a good, a good thing tonight for football Friday night. A lot of action taking place. Adam Cellini and Dwayne Lindell will have all the highlights coming up at 11 o'clock tonight. I tell you what, look at this. It just it continues to cover much of our area, just right there on the border of Charlotte County and Sarasota. That means limited shower activity. You can see once in a while a storm breaking out in the middle of that dry air, but it doesn't stick around long as it builds up. It actually taps into that drier air and shuts it down. Well, this is not being shut down. This is actually the strongest hurricane of the season in the Atlantic Basin. It's a Category 4, 140 mile hour winds. Could actually go a little bit higher. And category 5, probably out of the question, but still 145 mile hour winds, uh, possibly by the 8 o'clock advisory. We'll have that in just a few minutes. You can see all the rain now with that moisture down to our south and along the east coast. Not much going on here. Once in a while, as I said, there'll be a shower popping up here and there in the Gulf of Mexico, but they don't stick around long. There's two now just about 60 miles offshore of Siesta Key. They're pushing to the east, but the game in Palmetto at Manatee High looking good right now. Venice is looking pretty good. Arcadia, if there's game there, they're getting rained out. Uh, in fact, uh, right now, Wachula, a few showers nearby and just some spotty showers out there in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, currently we have 85 degrees. Still feels like 91, though. And the dew point at 72. We have a west wind at 7. The pressure 29.99 inches. That's actually rising a little bit. The high today, there you go, 90 degrees once again. And this morning's low was above average at 76. Well, rainfall for the month, quite a bit, but we're still below average uh, at 1.62 inches. And for the year, pretty much right on target at just 23 hundredths of an inch below average for the year thus far. Statewide temperature is cooler where it's been raining in Orlando. It's 76 degrees there now. And you can see the inland uh, areas in Sebring, Avon Park, Lake Placid, all in the 70s there as a result of that rain nearby. And Arcadia is cool to 79. Venice at 84, Cortez at 85 degrees. Well, let's get to the tropics and show you the color-enhanced satellite imagery of Matthew now. A well-defined eye at this point, deep convection developing all around it. The tropical storm force winds extend out from the center to the northwest and northeast 170 miles, 170 miles. So this is by far a very big storm and uh, outflow at all levels are looking pretty healthy at this point. The latest on it, 949 millibars, and the top winds at 140 gusts up to 160, 165 miles an hour. And we're expecting it to make a big break to the north beginning Saturday night. And then uh, after that, on day four and five, there's still some pretty good spread there as far as where it may be. It could be well east of the Bahamas, or it could be near Florida and southeast coast of Florida. So we'll have to watch it closely here. Most of the models agree that it will move off to the north through Cuba. And then after that, there's a little bit of a spread there as to where it may head. As far as the forecast goes for boaters, winds out of the northeast tomorrow, 5 to 10 knots. The seas will be 1 to 2 feet. It should, should be pretty good boating weather. Water temperature still very warm at 88 degrees. UV index will be a 9, and we're expecting a little bit more easterly wind, so that should help with the red tide, at least pushing the red tide offshore. Sunrise will be at 723 tomorrow. Low tide upcoming uh, in just a few minutes, 741. The forecast for the next seven days, Good chance for showers and storms as some of that rain kind of works its way around, Matthew, into our area Monday and Tuesday. Maybe a little drier come the latter half of the work week next week. We'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm Whitney Stewart, the current National Boys and Girls Club's Youth of the Year. And I'm Haley Wilkes, news anchor for ABC7. Please join us for the Women in a Changing World panel discussion. You will hear from a three-time Olympic gold medalist, senior vice presidents from Disney and Tupperware, a New York Times senior writer, and an Alaskan Native poet. For more information, please visit womeninachangingworld.com. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. 
I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're discussing the role of immigrants and day laborers here on the Suncoast, and we are joined by Manuel Chapote, a volunteer on the steering committee for the nonprofit group Unidos Now, and Dr. Rich Swire, a citizen uh, journalist, and I don't... <laughs> And I don't want to leave you out, Sarah. I'm uh, sorry about that. But, um, Manuel, let me start with you because, you know, obviously some of the opinions Rich is expressing is something that you hear right out of the mouth. So every time you've gone to go to a, a Trump rally, uh, there are a lot of people out there uh, who have that opinion. And when you hear it, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are that how can 11 million people undocumented in this country create the chaos in the economy. This is a 300 plus million economy individuals who live in this country. How this small group at the lowest level in our economy can bring down the largest economy in the world. This is, this is just blaming into a small group of individuals the maladies that are around in the country. That's true, but we're, we're still trying to dig our way out of what was a near depression uh, and where employment has, uh, the unemployment rate has gone down substantially. There are a lot of people who are not making I, what they were before. I understand, but we cannot blame on this 11 million people that they brought all these maladies and they are the cause of this because this is the wrong way to process. Well, Which, I, 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 look, look, the state of Florida, in order to, to educate, medicate, and incarcerate illegals, the cost annually is about five billion dollars. Well, they're also incarcerating a lot of uh, legal re and, residents. But let me. Let but me, I'm just hold, saying. Hold I'm just saying five billion I, dollars that we in the state of Florida would I, not have to be paying. I want to ask and you. And we this. have a growing threat. Right, hold on, Rich. In Rich, hold on. Yes. I want to ask you this because sure. your argument previously was, well, listen, if these employers only paid a, a a wage that Americans can live on, we would not have that problem, correct? Of course. All right. So what about raising the minimum wage to $15? No, no. Oh. You don't need what you do. Uh, is the because market, I'm the sorry. Market, hold, hold on a second. The market is driven. Hold the on. Market. Because I often hear the argument no, against yeah. raising the minimum wage is that it raises the cost of products. The market, and we the market, don't want to do that. The way you create a job is to make a profit. If you can't make a profit, you're not going to create a job. That's the only thing that creates a job. Governments don't create jobs. Illegals don't create jobs. Legals don't create jobs. It's a individual business that makes a profit and because they make enough profit and they have enough volume so, they hire somebody so, now so so well, hold on problem. one second so so let's say it so costs you 70 bucks a month for to hire a service to to cut your lawn what happens when that goes up to 140 dollars a month then p people pay it you have to if you want your lawn cut you have to make a decision it's just like anything if i want to build a car or if i want to pick oranges I have to make a decision. What am I willing to pay, and what are people willing to pay so for So let's garden? say you want to take your wife out to dinner downtown. Sure, Great sure. restaurants downtown Absolutely. in Sarasota. It costs you 100 bucks. Sure. What happens if it costs you 200 bucks? Well, then I'll pay the 200 bucks. Can I make a, sure. a comment here? Um, I'm from Louisiana, where we had plantations and slaves. And if you asked any of them, would you rather pay a slave and have your products less or, or hire people legitimately and pay more, of course they're going to say less. But it's not humane. It's not okay. I think to the people and, and the, the entities that are to blame is the government that is allowing illegals to stay but not allowing them to work and the employers that are hiring them. Because I'm an employment lawyer at USF, uh, employment professor at USF, and I do employment law. You have to file a Form I-9 
for every single employee, even if they work one hour. You have to pay wages that are a certain amount. You have to keep up with time records. You have to pay workers' comp insurance. The employee, employers that are hiring illegals are violating laws. So right off the bat, these employers are not the most legitimate employers that are abiding by all the laws. So if they're not legitimate employers already, do you think that they're going to treat the illegals with the humane and in the respect that that they deserve? Probably not. They're already shady. Manuel, what yeah. happens right right now when um, somebody who is undocumented, who's working either for a local construction company or a landscape or, or whatever, they get hurt on the job? Uh, do they have unemployment, you know, compensation uh, like like the rest of us? I don't think they can apply through the workers' compensation. I don't think they qualify for that because they don't, they are undocumented. Right. So I guess the family takes care of them. I have been I've seen cases of people that have been injured in agriculture, mm -hmm. and they have taken back to their countries because the costs here of maintaining this person in the hospitals were excessive. Rich, what would you do with the owner of the landscape company, <coughs> or the construction company, or the restaurant, or the the farmer who is caught uh, not? Paying workers' comp, not paying uh, state taxes. Federal well, tax. first of all, they, we look. Congress, the United States Congress, we have a wall. We have a wall already built. It's called a legal wall. The legal wall says, "Here's what it is to be a citizen. Here's the process you go through to be a citizen. And once you're naturalized as a citizen, here's your responsibilities." There are people that are bypassing that laws, and Congress, and this administration, and previous administrations. I don't want to just pick on this administration. But previous administrations have looked the other way. Why? Because the big money, the chambers of commerce, Chobani, the big businesses, they want cheap slave labor. They don't want to pay, for the, but they're going to make a huge profit. You can't do that and be a human being, as was mentioned, if you're, you're inhumane. You're literally running a plantation. Chobani is literally running a plantation. So, so Sarah, let me ask you, if there was legislation that um, would, would, would result in criminal penalties and jail terms for companies that hire there already uh, are. <laughs> and they were enforced, I mean, what, what, what would happen to, to our, our community? I think then all of the illegal immigrants would be here and not be able to work. And I think that if you're going to allow them to stay, you have to make a way for them to have the ability to work. If, if you criminalize all the employers that are shady, okay, we need to do that because we need to have Americans be able to compete, and it needs to be done in a way that not criminalize the employer. If you're going to let the illegal stay, you give them a right to work, and then that levels out the playing field because now they can compete against an American and now they get the rights of workers' comp and all of that. If not, then I say kick them out of the country if that's what you're going to do. But, but you can't set up a system right. where you're like, you're illegal, but you can't work. But, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, Donald Trump was kind of uh, put into, to, Donald Trump put, putting his feet into the fire. Jeez, it happens every <laughs> single day. But there was the issue about the uh, deportation of 11 million undocumented. Sure. Uh, Emmanuel, when, when people in, in the community hear a man who may well become president of the United States talk about that, what, what's their reaction? What we think is the cost of doing that, it would be so great not only to America, but to them too. Because they have families, they have established community, they have bought houses, paid taxes. Uh, the Social Security has, as of 2006, five billion of money that cannot be matched. Is money that is sitting there without taking care of the interest that that generated. Well, the know, taxes are paid. Can you let me finish, please? Please, go. go ahead. Every time you go to shop for a clothes or f uh, for anything that you shop for, you're paying taxes. So is saying that the immigrants undocumented do not pay taxes, that's not real. And they are permanently here in Florida. It's not like the snowbirds that they come and they stay for a period, short period of time and they go back. The undocumented immigrants that live in our communities stay permanently here, contributing for the taxes, contributing for those businesses to flourish and to 
criminalize or well, let, let, hold on, I don't want to see I, I, this no, I, undocumented I, I, hold, hold on one second. We have less than 45 seconds left. Right. So if you want to make a point, make it the, 15 it, let's seconds. Let's talk and about illegal break. aliens because it's not undocumented immigrants. The, the legal term by Congress is illegal aliens. We have people who have broken our laws and come in here. They're benefiting from our society. They may be contributing a little bit, but they're taking a lot more. Okay. No, Very that good. is hold, not certain. Hold on one second. We're going to continue the discussion, but we have to take a quick break. And when we return, we're going to have final thoughts and comments from our viewers. Stay with us. At ABC7, it's all about being here for you. ABC7 News at 7 with award-winning investigative journalist Alan Cohn. In-depth reporting and debate on important issues and stories in our community. With a featured topic of the day and a live roundtable discussion with community leaders and newsmakers. Plus a quick recap of the day's top stories and weather. ABC7 News at 7 weeknights. Now more than ever, we're here for you, Suncoast. Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discovered new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. On Animal Outtakes, Every week, it's a new animal adventure. From meeting curious lemurs to feeding big cats and hosing down rhinos, there's never a dull moment. And sometimes these amazing animals chime in. Tune in to Animal Outtakes to find out what they have to say. Watch Animal Outtakes this weekend on ABC7. The agents at SWC would like to show you pictures of all the homes that they've sold quickly for their clients. But they're just too many to show. Contact SWC today and find out for yourself. We just market your home better. The all new MySunCoast.com. Just another way, we're here for you. Welcome back. We are discussing the role of immigrant labor on our Suncoast workforce in our panel. Uh, joins us for final thoughts. Manuel, you know, I once did a story uh, about the cost to the healthcare industry, local, how much local hospitals, and many of them break it down line item, in terms of, of how much they have to pay when people come into the ER that don't have health insurance, including undocumented uh, uh, men and women. There is a substantial cost to taxpayers. Uh, correctly. There is the myth that immigrants come here to take welfare, and they live out of the welfare. Let me just point some figures, and I need to go over my notes here. Um, the estimate of immigrants are earning $240 billion a year, pay about $90 billion a year in taxes, and the, they use $5 billion in public benefits. So the money that they contribute to the economy and what they pay in taxes is much higher than what they are using in the services if they need to go to Sarah, hospital. what would what would you think would happen if all of a sudden we basically beam them all up? I mean, in, in, if we did that Friday night in Sarasota, Saturday when a lot of landscaping is done, what impact would it have on, on our community here? I would never support anything like that. I think we need to build the wall. I think we need a system of tracking the um, visa holders, visiting visas, um, working visas, and then I think we need to take care of the people here because we've gotten ourselves into this situation because of greed, because people don't want to pay um, the right wages. I mean, this is years upon years of a problem that hasn't been fixed, and so I don't think we just say, oh, okay, now we want to throw them all out. I think we take care of the ones that are here. And we build a wall. Well, I, I, hey, Rich, I we, we have less than a minute left, but I uh, want to give you well, the last me, word. You, you brought up the emergency room costs. I, I initially brought up the idea of these diseases coming in. Yeah. Let's talk about TB. Just regular TB costs $20,000.
to treat a TB case. Rich, we, if we, we have somebody, Zika coming in. And that's another one. Where'd that come from? South is not America. Where did Zika come from? <laughs> South are, are America. You, I, I hope you're not suggesting that illegal yeah. immigrants brought but Zika, Zika. into our country. I'm not suggesting that we have a disease is coming into the United States we have not seen here. We're talking nearly I, half I don't, a million dollars. And, and I don't think you could pro possibly cite any scientific absolutely. evidence that it's because These of... These uh, are literally right. bioterrorists coming All right. across okay. our Thank border. you so much for joining us. But before we go, we want to share with our viewers what some people are saying about last night's show. Our topic was millennials, something not controversial, and why so many of them are leaving the Suncos. We asked you what you thought could be done about retaining more of our younger residents, and here is what you had to say. Tim Hazlitt writes, SRQ needs to treat them and appreciate them as much as they do the seniors. Affordable housing, yeah, that means you, Benderson. Jobs and other services stop crushing every event that is for them because the seniors are inconvenienced. God forbid. Patty O'Brien Pauly writes, because of the older people don't allow anything to happen in Sarasota, it has become such a sleepy town over the 21 years, except for tonight. <laughs> there used to be more venues to go to, but not anymore. And Crystal Rohar writes, there are very few jobs for college graduates. Pay is very low compared to the cities, and the houses are very expensive comparably. I just paid twice for a house what I pay in Jacksonville, and the pay here is significantly less. Less. If you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, and I bet a couple of you might, just go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. I want to thank our guests for being here tonight, Sarah Blackwell, CEO and attorney for Protect U.S. Workers Now. Thank Manuel you. Chapate is with the nonprofit group Unitas Now, and Dr. Rich Swire is a citizen journalist and publisher. We'll be bringing you uh, our last check on our weather plus our primetime headlines when we come back. It's time to upgrade your favorite news app. Now, ABC 7's My Sun Coast News app is better than ever with a dynamic brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Stay connected anytime, anywhere with breaking news and weather alerts, video on demand, and live streaming of your Sun Coast news. Download our free My Sun Coast News app on your mobile device at your app store. ABC 7's all new My Sun Coast News app. Just another way we're here for you. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. We'll have headlines in just a moment, but first let's check our weather with ABC 7 Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Well, checking in one last time here, Alan. I'll tell you what, beautiful sunset tonight. Uh, some clouds out there, a little bit of a shower or two starting to pop up in the Gulf of Mexico and work their way on shore. They're not very tall storms, and what that means is that you wouldn't expect it to stick around long, and it wouldn't be all that heavy uh, as a result of this dry air that's just right now. Uh, in our area and that's dry air in the upper levels of the atmosphere we're not talking at the surface so it's still rather humid out there but nonetheless some of this may eventually work its way down to the surface to start things off tomorrow morning well we continue to monitor the strongest hurricane of the season this is matthew and it went through rapid intensification what that means it went from a category one in less than 24 hours to a category four uh, winds up to 140 miles an hour now and possibly even higher it's well defined uh, we don't see this normally as a result of this uh, very warm pool of, of water here that's been sitting around for the last 10 years, really. And it's a lot of heat and a lot of energy there. The winds, now that's, uh, this may be a good thing as a result of Matthew, is that we're going to see more easterly component to our wind flow, especially on Sunday. And that will push the red tide effects, anyway, offshore. We won't get a sea breeze developing on Sunday. Saturday, a little sea breeze develops in the late afternoon, but for the most part, easterly winds throughout much of the day. So if you can find a spot on the beach, it should be okay. 
Again, this little line of low pressure has kind of squeezed all the moisture down to our south right now. And this trough and all that dry air that's in place is kind of blocking Matthew from coming into our picture. So that's a good sign. Uh, as far as the rain goes, you can see this activity right here. This is kind of interesting. It's moving generally to the north. Wachula has had their fair share of heavy rainfall. And uh, Arcadia now getting hammered by some heavy rain. And notice these showers. They're starting to pop up and they're moving to the east. And wouldn't be surprised to see one or two of these work their way into some of the games tonight along the Sun Coast. But South Venice, just south of the airport, getting some rainfall there. The big storm in Arcadia right now, producing some lightning strikes. And these just popped up in the last half hour. They are moving off uh, generally to the northeast at around 10 miles an hour. So uh, count on a few brief showers near Longbow Key in about an hour's time from now. 85 degrees, that's the temperature. The dew point is at 72, fairly high. West winds are at 7, and the pressure has been rising now. And as far as the high goes, 90 degrees, that's been a common occurrence, it seems, all fall long. And 82 degrees now in Jacksonville. Orlando, it's cooled down to 76 there as a result of some rain in the interior portion of the state and our viewing area uh, down into the mid-70s there in Lake Placid, Sebring, and Avon Park. Well, the overall satellite imagery is showing where all that dry air is, hardly any clouds to be found. And we're going to start to see some of this moisture work its way back in our direction. That's once Matthew starts to move to the north, we'll get that easterly wind out ahead of it, and that will bring some of those showers and storms back our way late in the afternoon and evening. So we'll get back into that pattern, I do believe. Color-enhanced satellite imagery showing this well-defined system and it's starting to look like a buzzsaw when it gets to Category 4 and 5. As you can see, it uh, pretty uh, looks like uh, symmetrical there as far as that goes. And the eye wall itself is 15 miles wide with the tropical storm force winds extending some 170 miles out from the center. Jamaica looks to get the full effect of this right now. And it may be on this edge of the cone of uncertainty. If it is, we're going to feel the impacts here. It won't be hurricane, but... We certainly will get that into southeast Florida near Miami and Fort Lauderdale, so it still remains to be seen. A lot of the forecast models continue to keep it east of uh, our state. A couple still hanging on to that solution. But a lot can happen, and the Hurricane Center reminds folks, don't focus on the center line so much. There will be feeder bands, especially on the east coast. Northeast winds, 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be 1 to 2 feet in a light shop. Good boning weather out there. Seven-day forecast, just a 40% chance for storms. A little bit better in the afternoon and evening on Sunday. And then we could even see some of the storms and squall lines move through on Monday and Tuesday. We'll be right back after this. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like little... my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. Whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT Wingard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT Wingard impact-resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. Now we'll look for at your primetime headlines. There are 39 days left until the election, and Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are trying to appeal to voters, some of whom are already casting early ballots. ABC's Lana Zak is following the latest from the campaign trail. In an election still up for grabs, <laughs> Hillary Clinton in Florida responded to supporters who feel like she should do more. Some might say, well, hey, my gosh, you've only got 39 days to go. Why aren't you just out there, you know, beating up on your opponent and doing everything to get the vote out and all the rest of it? Well, I'll do that, but. <laughs> Meanwhile, Donald Trump is campaigning in Michigan and visiting the Ford Museum, but he didn't answer reporters' questions on today's tweets. Mr. Trump, why did you go in the late-night tweet storm last night?
Starting in the wee hours this morning, Trump railed against Clinton, former Miss Universe Alicia Machado, who he described as disgusting, and the conservative newspapers that have written scathing anti-Trump editorials today, including Dorothy Rabinowitz in the Wall Street Journal, warning that Trump would be, quote, the most unstable, proudly uninformed, psychologically unfit president ever to enter the White House. ABC News has learned Trump surrogates were issued a talking points memo encouraging them to launch counterattacks to Clinton on, among other things, her response to Monica Lewinsky. And we are hearing from Trump himself in a different forum. A judge ruled to release Trump's deposition on a lease dispute regarding his new Washington, D.C. hotel. You think that your comments would cause a Latino or a person of Mexican heritage to potentially be biased against you? With respect to what? With respect to anything. I think in many cases they like me. Trump is having fun with some of those 3 a.m. Twitter questions, writing he will be awake to take the call. Meanwhile, the Commission on Presidential Debates confirms that there was a problem with his microphone in the debate hall. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. According to a new Mason-Dixon poll of Florida voters favor Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump, but not by much. The poll finds Clinton leading Trump 46-42. 7 percent support in that poll. Clinton's edge in the state is powered by her support among women and non-white voters. Libertarian Gary uh, uh, Johnson has a support of 7 percent of those asked. Like father, like son, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush appears to be on the same page as his pop. He does not plan to vote for Donald Trump for president, but unlike H.W., Jeb isn't voting for Hillary. The New York Daily News reports Bush has suggested to attendees at a private luncheon Wednesday that he might vote for libertarian Gary Johnson. Sources close to Jeb Bush's dad say the former president, H.W. Bush, said last week that the 92-year-old former Republican president would vote for Democrat Hillary Clinton. Florida's Senate seat is up for grabs this November, and Marco Rubio's opponent is making his way to the Sun Coast. Congressman Patrick Murphy will speak in the Venice area at the Democratic picnic tomorrow. Murphy faces an uphill battle against Rubio. The latest poll numbers from Real Clear Politics show him down four points. Again, Murphy will be at a Democratic picnic at Maxine Barrett Park off of Harbor Drive. It begins at 5 p.m. The theme of the picnic is a familiar one, stronger together. Across the nation, investigators are still trying to figure out why a New Jersey transit train barreled into a Hoboken train station. The NTSB says a, it found a data recorder in the locomotive, but are looking for a second one near the front of the train. More than 100 people were injured. A 34-year-old woman was hit by flying debris and was killed. The officer is like, he just looked at me like, she's gone, bro. And I'm like, she's not gone. Like, somebody's got to come here and help her right now. Like, she won't die, I promise. Like, I literally stayed right there with her until she was gone. Investigators have requested an interview with the engineer who has been released from the hospital. The station remains closed to commuters. And that is all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us, and have a great weekend. My name is Haley. I have fragile X syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.com. EmployFlorida.com. It's time to upgrade your favorite news app. Now, ABC 7's My Sun Coast News app is better than ever with a dynamic, brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Stay connected with new features that make it easy to submit photos, share stories on Facebook and Twitter, and save stories for reading at a later time. Download our free My Sun Coast News app on your mobile device at your app store. ABC 7's all new My Sun Coast News app. Just another way we're here for you.
powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. Hurricane season is here, and Suncoast weather can go from this to this in seconds. So when severe weather threatens, count on the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're armed with the most advanced weather technology so that we can bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. Plus, we focus on the Suncoast and track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. On the next Black Almanac. Trump's attempts at Black and Latina outreach are probably too little too late. He's doing so badly among African Americans that in more than one poll, the percentage of black support for Trump is smaller than the margin of error. Latino voters are being told he thinks unauthorized immigrants have to go and can't ever be fully American. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC 7.